Thank you, Andres. All right, next up we have COA US, past, present, and future. And to present on that topic, we have Robin Hastings and George Williams from Nichols, Christopher Brennan from CIN, John Sturbins from the University of Michigan, Chris Key Library Services. Thank you. I guess since I was the uh, first Koha U.S. president, I got to be uh, the ghost of Koha U.S. past. Um, so this is actually going to be less of a, uh, a presentation and more of a travelogue of my past five years of vacation. So, um, <laughs> ready for this? Uh, this all started kind of as whispers during Koha Con 13 in Reno, Nevada. Uh, that's the first time I think a lot of us got together as a group um, in the, during the international uh, uh, presentation or during the international conference. So um, this is this is us in Reno uh, right before we decided to create a U.S. users group. Um, I would like you know you could probably point out you can see Fred there. Uh, you can see me right in the middle of that bright turquoise shirt. Um, there are several of us. Uh, Kyle is up front there. Yeah, there's lots of us there. Um, so we, we kind of we kind of talked about what we wanted to do. And I wasn't actually involved in the Wenatchee planning at all. I'm not sure how that happened. But we ended up deciding to meet in Wenatchee, Washington in uh, 2014. And this is uh, a picture of us at a dinner. I, I, Use this picture only because that's the exact same shirt. Um, a year later, I'm wearing the exact same shirt. Um, this is <laughs> this is actually us in the in the library in Wenatchee, and it's uh, there were enough of us that it required two pictures uh, to catch us all. And this is where we actually decided to become a users group. We took a vote and decided that uh, yes, we did want to work on on becoming a group that. Uh, um, would represent those of us in the the uh, United States. So, uh, Bywater at that point donated uh, mailing list ser services, I do believe. Uh, Nichols donated the domain name um, and server space for the wiki, and we started to kind of get things rolling. Um, I had in my calendar October 9th of 2014 was our first official uh, Koha US meeting, and that would be a month or two after we got back from, from Washington here. And then in February of 2015, we elected our first slate of officers. That would be me as, as the president. Um, I believe Nick was vice president, and we had a secretary. I don't know if Jason was the secretary. I was like placeholder for a while. That's possible. Well, Nick left his his uh, organization to be, go to Bywater, and so we had to find a different vice president. I believe that was Chris Rudy because he was the next president. Um, but uh, at that point, we had a board. The three of us, essentially, were, uh, were the board, and we were ready to go. Um, so we had our second. Uh, annual conference in uh, Erie, Pennsylvania. Same style shirt, but it's a different color. Uh, I do, I, I, once I get a style, I like to stick with it. Uh, so this was all of us at, outside of the hotel that we met at in, in Erie. Um, at this point, we had decided that even though I was uh, voted in uh, in February 2015, I wasn't going to be wasn't going to have to give up the presidency until the next August in um, Monterey. No, this is still Erie, I forgot. These are some of the more pictures from Erie. Um, we've got Chris uh, giving a, a lecture and people, people uh, learning lots of good stuff. Okay, so then uh, this is Monterey. This is where I handed over the baton um, to Chris Rohde to become the president. And this is where I failed miserably. I should have gotten a little pink wand and, and used that as the, the uh, power stick to, because uh, uh, that would be a tradition that would probably still be in place. But uh, so during all of this, actually a little bit before uh, we got to Monterey, um, 
we did become a 501c3 organization. So uh, we are a charitable organization that can accept uh, donations, tax exempt donations. Um, and the bylaws had been approved. So by the time we got here, we were uh, an official foundation uh, organization and we had real bylaws in place, the same ones that we're amending uh, right now. So <laughs> and you learn as you go along, right? So um, at this point, officers only have to serve for a year. I, my 18 year stint was the uh, for 18 years, 18 months. <laughs> it was a really long time I was president. For life, right? Yeah. 18 months did. Um, no, I'm going the wrong way. Yeah, okay. So this is us in Coeur d'Alene last year. Um, I'm wearing a completely different type of outfit. But you'll notice that uh, almost all of the men are wearing five shirts. Yeah, there was a lot of colorful plaid going on. John's the outlier. He's wearing the same I'm wearing the same shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I am so glad I'm not the only one because I actually have that dress in my closet in my hotel. Um, I'm going to wear it at home. Uh, but it's, uh, so I like, what's like, I, if I like clothes, I like them. So anyway, this is us in, in Coeur d'Alene, and this is when um, Christopher Brandon became our president uh, at that, that session. And then we all got exhausted, had to put our heads down for a little while to rest. Um, I thought this was a great picture. And that brings us to, um, to Portland, Oregon. So, um, Oh, that's right. Okay. So in Monterey, we were still in the process. The, the 501c3 process took a year. Um, I have that it started in um, December of 2015, and I got the completed process letter in November of 2016. So um, it took a year to become a 501c3 uh, organization. And um, part of that is I live in Kansas, and uh, my Secretary of State is Chris Kobach, and, and nothing is easy. Uh, in that case. So um, so now that brings us to uh, the ghost of, of conference present. And I guess that's, that's Chris is going to do that one. Um, okay. Well, I thought I had. Uh, I didn't pick it up. Okay. I had today's uh, um, Yeah, there it is. No. It didn't pick it up. Okay, I had the group picture today. I added it added on my phone, but apparently it didn't sync up. So there we go. It would have been nice. All right. Okay. So uh, I guess where we are right now, um, we've had a, uh, a very exciting and productive year uh, as a group. I mean, this year has been uh, a whirlwind. Okay. <laughs> this, oh, there it is. this year's been a whirlwind of uh, uh, activity because uh, not only did we have bylaws in place uh, and a lot of structure, we had to decide uh, what we were going to be doing as a group. We wanted to make sure that uh, um, we knew exactly, you know, the direction that we were going, and we wanted to keep moving forward. We didn't want to just kind of meet and say, "Hi, how you doing?" Let's let's pat each other on the backs. And, and uh, see each other's faces. We, we love to do the, the video chats and, and meet every month, but it needed to be more than that. And uh, so one of the, the big hurdles for us this year has been, uh, uh, we're talking about funding and trying to move forward with funding and we are actually earning funds so that we can go through development. And the other thing that we really had to uh, push forward this year was uh, uh, getting a development workflow uh, in uh, 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 production so that we could uh, uh, put that to use and uh, actually fund some developments. So we're working together as a group. Uh, one, of, one of the big things uh, that uh, was exciting uh, is that uh, John took on the mantle of treasurer and uh, oh my goodness, this, this man is uh, really helped our group move along. Uh, I never realized how much uh, there was in having uh, a nonprofit organiz organization and 
uh, and keeping track of funds. And this man makes it, he, he makes it look uh, uh, effortless, but I'm sure it's not effortless for him. Um, now, this year we, we've had a, a very great team. And I feel like uh, uh, all I do is say, okay, let's do this next, let's do this next. But I mean, we have a team that really that uh, really uh, uh, takes the ball and runs with it. George has been, you know, being the vice president, he is the uh, chair for a lot of our committees. Uh, John's is going crazy with uh, keeping us uh, all in order uh, with our finances, and Jason has been phenomenal, being our secretary, keeping us uh, all informed of what's going on. Uh, when our meetings are and uh, getting uh, information out and also, you know, all of us are contributing to uh, our, our website. We've made a huge move this year uh, to move from the wiki over to a website because we wanted something that looked a little bit more professional, wanted something that was a little bit easier to, to maintain. My goodness, it is, had a domain name that made sense. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to remember what year did we, what year did we actually change our name? Because we did not start out as Koha US. We actually started out as uh, uh, Koha NA North America, and and not everybody, the same time, uh, not everybody December, liked that one. December 2015. Yeah, um, but we wanted to make sure that you know people understood. You know, yeah, we're we're a, a, a US region. Uh, for a user group, but all are welcome. And we've had people from, you know, Bob. Uh, Bob was here uh, a couple of years ago in our group, and uh, you know, yeah, in Monterey and, and Irma. <laughs> you know, we, we welcome everybody to uh, to take part in uh, our groups and discussions. We had uh, um, Chris. Uh, who was gracious to a keynote last year in our, in our meeting. Chris, were, are you here? Were you in your pajamas when you did that? Yes. I remember a cat. And what time in the morning was that? Wow. Keynoting at 2, 2 a.m. in the morning. But no, uh, we are so grateful for that. We've had, we've had uh, other uh, presenters uh, that uh, promoted in to, to present. Um, no, it's just been an exciting year, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing where we're going from here. And, I guess that's me. Yes. So uh, I let myself get elected to be the vice president of Koha US last year, which means I become the president of next year, and that's the future of all of this. Um, you know, a couple of things that we've, that we've done uh, have kind of laid the groundwork for what we can do in the future. You know, this is the first year we've actually had an official you know, path to membership, which involves uh, a membership fee. Uh, because, and I think that that's the thing that we're going to be working on the most in the next year is trying to make sure that, that you know, everybody that wants to become a member becomes a, a, a paid member, so, because that's going to be the thing that drives um, our finances mostly, is, is having people that are willing to to put up the big, large, huge amount of twenty-five dollars a year, and to be a member, so that's almost well, it's over two dollars a month. Um, again, I'm willing to bet that your wife will pay for that. At least I know why he is. Um, and part of the reason we're able to do that too is because we, John, set up John and Robin set up PayPal um, so that we can um, do memberships, you know, easily through PayPal. But we can also take donations through PayPal if anybody wants to donate. Uh, met a couple of people. Um, but uh, I feel like that if we can get a lot of members that are interested in putting some um, $25 a year in, that will help us build more money because, you know, we, right now we have about two grand. Uh, but if we're talking about using our money to fund developments, um, two grand is like a couple of really small developments uh, for most of the places that we seen developments come from. So, you know, that's my hope is that we can get enough money to do some, some developments and maybe partner some of our developments. Like I know that if there's anything that I want to have developed through Nichols, 
Um, probably what I will do is I will come up with you know the amount. I'll, I'll probably get a quote on that development and then say to Coma US, you know, you guys want to be a part of this. And that can go through our development process in Coma US. And so maybe that way we can start getting our name into you know to into the development pool in Coma in the Coha community so that they, the Coha community knows that we're doing, doing things and we're trying to help the software along with many people be able to join and, you know, drive things that will help drive membership, which will hopefully drive donations, which will hopefully drive everything else. Um, the other things that we talked about doing, um, we've talked about, you know, offering some kind of uh, training, uh, facilitating training, facilitating, um, Mentor and mentee libraries, like a new library that's just joined with people, and maybe hopefully pair them up with someone who's been doing this for a long time um, so that you know we can build relationships among libraries that are just starting to come on, people that have been doing this for a while. Uh, and those are the kinds of things that I think we want to work on in the next year. But kind of, I think the question that we're going to be asking every time we talk about doing something is how will this, how will this get more people willing to join? And be able to, to pay twenty-five dollars for the um, so that's I think where we're going in the future. And Robin, I know what Robin's going to say. Actually, step over there by the by the lectern, and Chris, come on over here. And then Fred is on the co-op board currently, so stand up, Fred. And Jason is on the co-op board currently. Stand up, Jason. So Robin, tell us what's wrong with this picture of all the people standing up. The only girl is gone. We need more girls. Uh, this is a very male group. Uh, there are a lot of women in this room, and uh, um, we need to step up and, and be willing to uh, to serve. The guys are great. I, you know, they're they're fabulous guys. But but we need we need some female perspective in there sometimes. What I actually was coming over to say before we hand it off to to uh, uh, John was, um, George has the honor of, and pleasure, I'm sure, of working directly across the hall from me. So when I got the letter saying that we were a 501c3 organization, you know, I did a little loop in my office and, and George came to see what was going on. And he uh, did the first $10 donation to Koha US was, was from George because all he had was $10. <laughs> I completely agree with what Robin said, though, is that it would really be nice not to be an all-male board. Um, I'm sure that if we were not an all-male board, we would have gotten a lot more stuff done in the last year. <laughs> because I firmly believe what George Carlin said about you know, God, George Carlin said, if, if, if there is a God, I know it's a woman because no man, no woman would have screwed up the universe this badly. So if there's any women out there that want to help us join and be a part of co Please do it because we need all the help we can get. You guys are better at this thing. I just want to point out that uh, there is a new position on the board of the Coma Coordinating Group. And we need a vice chairman. It's uh, it was actually interesting being voted in treasurer. Number one, I ran unopposed, <laughs> which was one way to do it. Uh, the, the call for nomination stuff or otherwise actually came before Coeur so I was looking for something to do, to contribute. Back when I was an innovative library, I was heavily involved with the Innovative Users Group. I sat on a functional expert committee for a number of years, a program committee for one, maybe two years, uh, with a regional, the Eastern Great Lakes and the Michigan Innovative Users Group. I was always presenting, I was always doing something. And so now that we were no longer innovative, I was looking to fill that professional void and when the call for nominations went out, I decided to put my name in there and uh, ran on a post. And when uh, I was elected, Robin had a nice folder with a nice sunflower bank emblem on it. She looked at me and she smiled and she said, this is yours now. <laughs> and I apologize profusely for the state it was in. He's amazing. And uh, regardless of what state it was in, it was actually a lot better than you think. Um, it, takes, it gave me everything that I needed in order to be able to make sense of uh, the organization. And as the organization's, what turned out to be the organization's first real treasure, 
I had a number of challenges that any user group starting off is going to face. Um, number one, especially if you go through the process of becoming a uh, 501c3 nonprofit organization through the Internal Revenue Service, there becomes a lot of things you need to remain compliant in. The Internal Revenue Service actually has a whole website devoted to nonprofit agencies. And the one, if you're small enough like we are, form that they have to file every year. Well, this brought an issue to my mind. Well, we were not only recognized within the United States, but we were separately recognized by the state of Kansas as a nonprofit organization. Turns out there was compliance filings to deal with the state of Kansas as well. And so one of the first things I ended up doing was going through all of the god-awful Internal Revenue Code and looking at the state of Kansas website and determining what we needed to do to remain compliant. The IRS in particular seems to be a little bit more lenient because if you don't file for three years, they won't say anything. After three years, then they get a little antsy and they might write you a little letter. But even then, they have to have the current contact information. Without current contact information, they'd have nothing. So we came up with a compliance calendar. It turns out we only have to file one thing with the federal government and one thing with the state of Kansas. I also had to come up with a budget. It's very interesting coming up with a budget when you have less than one year's worth of financial data and you are currently in the process of migrating your, your revenue stream like we were from essentially conference income to a membership driven income. So I sat and thought long and hard about what I was going to do for this first budget. And I even put in a preface that says this budget is long on words and short on numbers because quite honestly, we really don't have all that much to go with. So I made a number of assumptions, some of which turned out to be horribly and drastically incorrect, but horribly and drastically incorrect in a way that actually benefited us because one of the things we've done collectively, all five of us on the board, is made sure and uh, made a very concerted effort to keep our expenses low. We use G Suite, the Google suite of applications for mail and drive and all this other stuff. Our status as a nonprofit set up by Robin ensures that we get that for free. That's fantastic. We don't pay bank surcharges anymore. And when we move to financial institutions, I made sure to select one that works specifically with nonprofit organizations as nonprofits, not necessarily as businesses, because the fee structures for businesses at a lot of commercial banks are significantly higher than they are for any uh, nonprofit organization. And that's actually what we have right now. We have a bank, uh, relationship with PNC Bank as a nonprofit organization. And as long as we maintain a very minimal level of money within our checking account, guess what? We don't have any fees. So membership is, is driving what we are doing uh, for money right now. It was actually interesting taking over when I did because I had to take care of all the conference account. And all of a sudden, Christopher sending me a whole bunch of receipts. Okay, this is all the, the stuff from the conference. And so I was working with him, working with Robin, and working with a number of other people to make sure everybody got paid. Um, I have to come up with a monthly report. That's part of the, the bylaws. There has to be a finance committee, which the treasurer is chair. And I had two people initially. One, unfortunately, was forced to leave. But now I have a replacement for that. Um, Candace is not here, but Eli is still here. He's the new, the new member of the finance committee. And I had to come up with categories. I had to come up with all sorts of things. And the budget helps to reinforce that. But the monthly finance committee report really brought it into focus. Because every time there's a board meeting, I have to have something to report to review up for the next general meeting. So this first year has been really exciting. And I'm actually up for re-election if the bylaws pass because of the staggered way we're trying to handle secretary and treasurer. So if I happen to get re-elected, I've got a number of things that I've been working with the board on. Uh, the first is the concept of a financial or business manager. One of the things I came to a conclusion really early, and it never made sense until I actually had responsibility for it myself, I can see why nonprofits have business managers in addition to treasurers. You really want the stability of having one person as a, as a constant, somebody that might not be elected, but might be appointed by the board, for example. 
Because otherwise, you're moving banks every year or every two years. You're moving this, you're moving your contact interests, you're moving this, you're moving all sorts of things. And as it was, it took us working concertedly as it did six months to get everything moved over. That's half of a one year term. And then you're telling me you gotta do it again. That seems kind of ridiculous. So the concept of a financial manager really will help to make sense. And if I get back into this position, I'll be working with the board on developing that and working with the, the finance committee. Membership is a big thing. We hope to increase our membership with the development process that we've been developing that was just recently approved. We now have something that we can point to our membership and say, the money we raise isn't for the organization, although we are putting aside a little bit for a rainy day fund. The membership dues we get and anything we get left over when we run conferences is going exclusively towards the development of the product. And that I think will be very key in helping to bring membership up to a level that we'd like. A year two budget will be in the works, obviously. I hope to be writing it, but I've got data to work with now. That's exciting. I'll have, be able to make real numbers and be able to make real assumptions, not just guesses as to what I think we'll do. And we've made it very obvious as a board to be as transparent as possible. It was interesting. All those years with Innovative, and outside of the one year at IUG where they have the big business meeting, I don't think I ever saw a financial report. But think about Innovative. Innovative is a proprietary company. Everything hides behind you know, windows and, and all sorts of stuff. The users group almost kind of silently reflected that as an open source community and as a group that supports that. You can go online right now and look at our budget. You can go online and look at all, all of our finance committee meetings. In fact, all of our meeting minutes are there. There's a level of transparency that this board has been able to put into place that I think is very important and reflective of the software that we are all here using and supporting ourselves. And that, I think, is something that will be very important to continue on in the future. And now you see why we don't want to let them go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know how we're doing on time, are we? Well, uh, well I, guess I thought Fred was the only question. The other thing I was going to, something that occurred to me is, uh, as John was talking about all that stuff, is that uh, we, um, Kohai US, facilitated um, tax exempt donations to this conference this year. So uh, the, the names you see over here, we made it easier for them to decide to donate uh, money to Kohai US because uh, if they had just given the money to Bywater, it would not have been tax exempt by US law. So um, that's something that we might be able to do in the future too. Um, because I know that uh, right now there is no longer a, uh, a trust to donate money to, to support COHA. Um, but in the event that that ever becomes available again, if it's a New Zealand trust or if it's a trust outside of the U.S., it's very hard for um, those outside of the U.S. Uh, organizations to accept money from U.S. citizens and then have that money be tax deductible. But if, we might be in a position in the future where if somebody wants to donate to a COHA worldwide trust, they can donate it to us, get their U.S. tax exemption, and then we can find a way to get that money to the, the right organization throughout the world. That's something else that I see as part of our future possibly. So, um, it looks like somebody's coming up to ask a question. So um, while she's coming up, I'll also make, uh, as, as I've been here all day, uh, if anybody is here and wants to be added to the Koha US mailing list, uh, you just come and talk to me. I've just been direct adding people to the list all afternoon, so feel free to, to come find me and make me add you. So, but there's no other question. No, it's not a question. It's just to say that actually the trust exists, but there's no money. Zero. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've heard a little bit, I've heard a couple of different stories about that, uh, about what happened with the trust and that there, there's problems. And that's something that as the community develops, you know, a way to facilitate all this, I'm just hoping that maybe Koha US can be a way for people um, for, to facilitate donations in the United States. Thank you. Thank you. 
was a little, a little bit surprised if, unless I missed something, uh, only uh, individuals are members of the Koha user US. That's not the library itself that is a member. We decided to do individual memberships just to make it easy on us okay. um, starting out. This is the first year that we've done this, this, and it just seemed like an easy way to deal with that. Um, so there's been talk about the possibility of doing uh, uh, library memberships or organizational memberships, but for the beginning, we made it as simple as possible for John to keep track of things. The, the membership uh, is from January 1st to, to December 31st. That's yeah, $25, unless you join after July 1st, then it's, then it's cut in half to $12.50, and everybody's membership expires on, on the last day of the year. And that was just kind of an internal way of making we did discuss it. Yeah, and because in France, uh, the Koha user group, his name is Kohala, and they have a different yeah. membership for individual and libraries, and the price for a library is something like, it depends on the size, what? Do you know? She said it, but maybe you don't know. She's the president of the Koha French user group. Yes. <laughs> Uh, there's a free price for uh, libraries, but I don't remember. <laughs> but it's like um, 200 euros uh, and, and so on. Uh, and uh, if the maximum price, uh, if uh, there's more than uh, 50 people in the library, and the staff. staff, yes. And we have uh, an uh, individual. Uh, uh, Members uh, price that is uh, twenty euros. So, like, yeah, we just said we. It was the easiest way to, to solve that discussion. So that's kind of why we chose individual memberships. But that's something that we may revisit in the future once we have more more time under our belt. Once we get a woman elected to a position in the organization, <laughs> we'll take care of it like that. Any other questions? Do you have a donate now button on your website? If not, will you put one there? I believe we do somewhere. Uh... You'll see. Learn from Koha US, collaborate. I believe one of the links is actually donate to Koha US. Well, I was going to pull it up on that. And on the donate uh, page, there's actually a link where, I recall there being a link where there is an option to donate using the PayPal uh, to our PayPal account. Uh, checks would also be welcome, of course, made out to Koha US. Another thing we have is an, a relationship with Amazon as a nonprofit organization. We are eligible for Amazon Smiles donations. One half of one percent of eligible Amazon purchases are gathered for those eligible uh, are gathered from Amazon if you select Call High US as your nonprofit organization of choice. We've actually received quite a bit of money through that, and I will note that not only individuals but institutions are also able to select that. We get quarterly income like everybody else through this process and year to date, through two deposits, we've received about $240. So that's not too bad, especially when you consider that I really didn't budget for all of that, uh, all that much going into it. But it's very easy if you go to, it's either Smiles or Smile. Uh, there's actually a link towards the bottom of the donate page that tells you what you need to do and how you can set it up to make those eligible purchase donations go to Koha US. Uh, <laughs> but that, that is a very easy way to be able to do it. Lots of, lots of different ways. Uh, it is also possible for individuals to set up recurring donations. Um, if you're interested in something like that, you can always contact me and I'll be happy to send you information 
uh, about a recurring donation, which is something that's not really listed there, but is actually available as an option as well. And thank you.